In the preparation room of the institute, Xing Zhu shows his visitors one of his most famous finds, a petrified baby Truton vid. It comes astonishingly close to the idea the scientists have of the North German raptor. So this is a Meilong spaceman. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Wow. Want to take a look? The original? Yes. Oh. Yes, thank you. Mei Long means peacefully sleeping dragon and does indeed have a sickle claw. It is well hidden, but it means that the little predator is a member of the true tondid species, just like the animals from Obenkirchen. The baby animal displays a sleeping posture typical of birds, another indication that the raptors were very similar indeed to present day birds. It's a wonderfully preserved fossil of a not quite adult Trutondid, and in a sleeping position at that. The poor little fellow was surprised in his sleep, you see. Now we know without doubt that it definitely was Trutondids that left those tracks back home. For Europe, this is in itself a significant find, because there are hardly any Trutondid remains in Europe at all. But Mei Long's European relatives would have been quite a bit larger. Uh, last uh, decade uh, witnessed uh, significant advances uh, in our understanding of uh, origin of birds. So now we can tell how dinosaur evolved into uh, birds. We can tell like uh, when first feather appeared and uh, when flight uh, originated. <laughs> Evolution from dinosaur to bird can be minutely observed at the Tianyu Natural History Museum south of Beijing. Here, hundreds of petrified fossil imprints are exhibited. Their physiology, skeletons, claws, and even plumage are well preserved. Some of the ancestors of our present day birds even had teeth. There are some typical flight feathers, you know, large, uh, rigid feathers uh, that uh, uh, we believe it uh, function in flight and also there, there are feathers like more downy like we call downy like feathers uh, probably insulation maybe other other functions so you see uh, dance already have different types of feather on their body little specimen provide a very strong evidence suggest uh, feathery the leg of feathery foot is a primitive condition for this for the group of at least for the pair avian It makes it all so much more tangible, more colorful, more varied. There's more life to it now than there was uh, before. Uh, we've been dramatically confronted with the indications we were looking for. It's as good as you get. It's precisely the confirmation we were hoping for. We got it right here, jumped up and hit us in the eye. <laughs> Speculation has become certainty. The North German raptors really were feathered. And that's not all the scientists have found out. From the remnants and the fossils, they have reconstructed the size of the raptors. They were up to nine feet long and about four foot six in height. They weighed between 60 and 80 pounds, and they were skillful predators. They probably communicated vocally. Their cries may have resembled the cawing of ravens. Like birds, the raptor's large eyes gave them three-dimensional vision. That was probably a major asset for hunting purposes. Only one thing distinguished them from present-day birds. They couldn't fly. But 
But how can the scientists reconstruct the motions and the speed of the raptors? To validate their new insights, they fall back on an old trick widely used in paleobiology. They compare the predatory dinosaurs with a similar animal that still exists today, the emu. Right, here's the enclosure. Okay, thanks. Now, let's take a closer look. It wasn't really smooth enough. There's still a few little bumps in it. You have to roll around a bit first. Yeah, right. Yuck, right to a big fat turd. You have to dig yourself right in. We want the emus from Hanover Zoo to move along this strip of sand, leave their footprints, and then we can see the similarities. Like the raptors, emus can't fly. Experiments like this with living creatures gets as closest to the most probable solution. It's like detective work. Try and get as near as you can to what actually happened.